Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and it's time for another segment on the drumsticks that I make. It's been a couple years since I've done one of these videos, and I have a lot of questions that have piled up. So I'm going to answer those today and then also show you some new models I've been making and selling. Uh, these uh, are all drumsticks that I make, except for the uh, Vic Firth sticks that are my custom stick right here. And I did a video on these recently. Uh, so we'll talk a little about that because I do have a few questions on, on these I have to answer as well. So we'll, uh, we'll spend a little while today talking about all these different sticks and, like I said, addressing the questions. I'll play a little for you. Uh, first, uh, the equipment I have here uh, that I'm going to play on. This is a quiet tone drum mute. This is an old one. Uh, this one is one of the uh, ones from the 1980s. So Henry Adler invented this, and then uh, the rights were sold to a guy who lived in New Jersey. His name escapes me, but I would buy these at Drummer's World in New York uh, in the 1980s, 1990s. Uh, and then I think he sold the rights to Sabian, and now they make a version of this, which is a little bit different, but it's still really good. The original pads that Sabian made were terrible, and then they fixed it because they got so many complaints. And now the new ones are, are great. But these do sound a little lower in pitch. The materials are a little different, as you'll see. And I've had to tape this here because it rattles. Uh, but the, again, this, this pad is extremely old. It's, it's probably around 40 years old. So it served me well. I have several of these. And then also you'll see this old Ludwig pad here. This is a classic. It's uh, the old Ludwig metal practice pads that would come with the uh, bell kit years and years ago, and maybe a snare drum. Uh, these things are just great. I have a number of these. They all sound a little different. This is the one I used to test the drumsticks. And I also have a little piece of steel here with a rubber backing that I used to test the sticks. So we'll get into that in a little while. Uh, but these Ludwig pads, if, if, um, if you can find them, they're fantastic. They are no longer made. Uh, and, you know, you can find them used. I see them every once in a while. So that's what I'm going to be playing on today. So, uh, like I said, the goal of this video is, is twofold. It's to answer questions, but also to show you what I've been up to in the shop as far as coming up with some new models. I'm always experimenting. It's kind of like a hobby of mine. I'm not sure how much longer I'll be making these sticks. I was, uh, um, well, let's just say I've, um, I've had some issues uh, when I do it a lot with my hands, it's very hard on your hands because you're doing a lot of sanding and there's vibration uh, that happens with uh, with the lathe when you're using woods this hard. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to keep going a little while longer, but um, but not sure. We'll see how long my hands hold up. But sometimes it gets in the way of my playing and I can't have that. So uh, if it starts doing that, then I will stop um, eventually. But in the meantime, I have been trying to churn out sticks and keep up with orders. I apologize to those of you who, you know, I've been back ordered and I'm trying to keep up. But, um, but now that summer is coming and the semester at the college is ending, I'll be able to spend a little more time in the shop and uh, have some sort of stock I can draw from. So I'm not having to make them, you know, uh, per order, which is kind of Tough to do because I find myself in there, you know, 3 a.m. <laughs> making drumsticks, which isn't necessarily what I uh, want to be doing. But but I really appreciate all the orders. I know they're expensive, but we'll tell you why here in a minute, and maybe that'll make you feel a little better. Um, but uh, I've put out a sort of display of sticks here that range in weights from the 50 gram range all the way up to the uh, 80 three or 84 gram range. It's a huge range in weight. Uh, the thing about these sticks is the, for most of them, the um, diameter is very, very similar to my drum set stick. And that's what I'm always preaching. You know, you don't want to really change your fulcrum to a heavy stick where you're holding out your hand like that. All right. You want it to be very similar with whatever stick you're using. And the way you control the weight is by the wood that you use, not the actual thickness or the length of the stick. Now lengthwise, most of these sticks run about 16 and a half to 17 inches. My drum set stick is about 16 and a quarter inches. I like a little bit of a shorter stick for drum set. And for concert playing, 
the weight uh, will be a little lighter, but the length will be the same. So you'll see these really heavy sticks here. These are the sticks that I use for warming up. I've done videos on that before. I talk about it a lot. What I was just playing with when I did that little opening are these 80, uh, 81 gram uh, leopard wood sticks, which I just made. I just got some more leopard wood. It's beautiful. Thank God, because <laughs> uh, stuff's hard to get. And it's all heartwood, which is very, very expensive. But these are just gorgeous, very dark. Hopefully you can see that we'll hold it under this camera. Just gorgeous wood. And um, it's all ready to go. It's all dried. Uh, and you, you saw how it sounded. I'll play a little more for you. So these are really, really heavy. And I normally just use these in the morning for, uh, like I've said before, just for warming up. Getting my hands moving. And then I'll put those down and then I'll use a lighter concert stick, like a uh, 70 gram stick. These are teardrop. So that's how I do it when I'm warming up and playing and practicing. Okay, so let's let's answer some questions first. Uh, a, one of the big questions I get is, do the sticks sound different? And the answer to that is, yes, they do. It depends on the weight. So uh, we can show you this real quick. This is a new wood I've been using. It's pecan, if you've ever had pecans, which is a nut. There's a tree, a pecan tree. Down south here, they grow like crazy. I have actually five of them on my property. So, uh, and it's a brittle wood where, you know, the pecans are heavy and towards the end of the summer, when they, you know, all get on there, the, the whole tree starts to sag and it's very common during a storm for limbs to fall off. So over the years, I've been collecting these limbs and cutting them up and drying them. And so finally, after about 10 years, I have a good supply of pecan. Uh, and so I've started using it and pecan is a beautiful wood. It's very close to hickory, but it's a little bit lighter. I'll show you. This is a hickory drumstick that Vic Firth makes me. And this is pecan, so hopefully you can see the, the difference there. We'll hold it under here. So pecan is a little bit of a whiter wood, but it's got a beautiful grain, and it's dense, uh, like hickory. So I'm, I'm really enjoying playing with these. So I've been able to make... Um, a lot of heavier sticks. So for the first time I've started making a marching stick and that's what this is. It is a little bit thicker, not to contradict myself from earlier, but it, instead of 5 eighths, it's a little bit closer to 7 eighths. A little bit closer, not exactly. Uh, but it's, it's a marching stick, so uh, it's got a lot of weight to it. These particular sticks are 83 grams and they're really well balanced. I've got a big barrel tip on here and they feel great. So that, that's, a, that's a marching stick, and, and I've gotten a lot of requests for these, so I'm, I'm starting to make them. So these woods, they all do sound and feel different. As you hear there, the thickness of the sound. Now if I take a lighter stick, which are these uh, persimmon, uh, 53 grams, it's a drum set stick, really, and you'll hear the difference right away. So obviously the sound is a little more shallow. It's not as dense. We'll show you right here. It's actually a lower sound because a lighter stick will give you a lower sound, just kind of like a cymbal. A heavier cymbal gives you a higher pitch. So it's a huge difference. So yes, the sound, the, the thickness the weight, the density of the wood gives you a much 
a higher pitch and thicker sound. So hopefully that answers that question. All these sticks do sound different. Then I got a lot of questions about stick testing. Actually, we'll leave these out. So uh, I've seen a lot of really funny things over the years. I remember in the old days, people would, uh, and still people do it, they do this whole thing. That has nothing to do with anything. That, you never, you, you cannot match sticks that way. There's only one way to match a pair of drumsticks. And I try to match sticks, I do, all the time, by pitch, by weight, all right? And I use different things to do that. The first thing I do is I use a piece of metal, all right? If you have a countertop, that works well. Just make sure you're hitting it in the same spot. Uh, Formica is really good, but metal's the best. So this is a piece of heavy steel. This thing weighs about six pounds, it's heavy, so. Now, when you test sticks, use the same hand. I see people all the time doing this. You see how they sound different? Now watch. They sound the same now. So different hands sound different because of the muscle mass, the weight of your, of your arm, that makes a huge difference. So if you're testing sticks right, left, they're not gonna actually be matched. Now I can make you a pair of sticks that match when with right, left, but the left stick's gonna need to be heavier, if you understand that. Because the left stick is always gonna be a lower pitch than the right stick. And I've done this for a long time now. I've been making sticks for, for a little over 17 years and, uh, uh, you know, producing them for other people. And so this is sort of a proven scientific fact. So don't test sticks like that. That's not going to tell you anything. You need to use the same hand. And then you'll get the pitch. Now I'll show you some sticks now that don't have the same pitch. Hopefully. These are what I call duds over here. So these sticks... I have a lot, I have boxes and boxes of these. So you'll make a pair of sticks and you'll use beautiful wood, like this gorgeous zebra wood. But what'll happen is one of the sticks will be lower in pitch because it's wood. So there's, there's different properties. So even though they weigh the same and all that, th there's just inconsistencies in the stick, in the wood inside that you cannot see and that will make them not the same pitch. Hear it? So I am using the same hand. Right, that's a huge difference. I can't sell these, I don't. Now if anyone wants to buy these, I have probably a hundred pairs of these. Well, like, they're beautiful, they're perfect, but they're just, I don't, wouldn't sell them to anyone to play because they're so uneven. You can hear that, I hope. And when you play with them, you might use that to your advantage in other words, the higher stick you could do in your left hand, like that. But personally, I don't care to do that. I like the sticks to match. So if I pick them up, you know, I don't, you know, I don't have a left stick or a right stick, and I don't have time to look usually. So I'll just pick them up and play, and I don't want to have that issue. So they they'll both match. Uh, so I hope you understand that. And all these here. Leopard, um, um, zebra wood tends to be a really troublesome wood for this because the grain is so interwoven and the, the grains can really vary. This will tear out on you. I actually kind of stopped using this because it's so expensive and the heartwood's really hard to find. But I have a lot of these display sets that are gorgeous. It's heartwood, zebra wood. And I have, you know, I have some left and I'm making lighter pairs now. But the heartwood is notorious for being inconsistent. So it's a waste of time and a waste of money. Uh, but if you want to display them and not play them, then I got some sticks for you. And just, um, you know, email me and we can talk about it. So that's how that works. Uh, now, as far as weight goes, uh, I try to get them within two grams um, maximum of each other. So in other words, uh, one stick would be 82 grams. Hopefully both sticks are 82 grams. And most of these are just like that. Exactly the same weight. And it's hard to do that because a gram is nothing. It's like you can't even feel a gram when you pick it up. 
It's like a feather, lighter than a feather, actually. All right. So uh, these particular sticks are perfectly matched in weight, 83 grams each. And I, my tolerance is two grams. So if the sticks are more than two grams apart, they get rejected. Uh, that's how I do it. The sticks I've been seeing these days that Cooperman was making, I know they just stopped uh, to using persimmon and a, a lot of the companies, I'm not going to mention any names, it's ter terrible. I mean, the, the state of drumstick making as far as the big companies. So, uh, which has been an advantage to me because I'm actually selling uh, quite, a, quite a bit of sticks like this. But there are still companies that, that are doing well. A lot of these companies are using this hornwood, which is... Um, kind of a manufactured wood is very heavy. I don't care for the feel of that. I've talked about that before. Uh, it just doesn't feel right to me. It's got a weird, almost artificial feel. So I, I like, you know, the real thing here. So I uh, hope that answers that question about, um, about weight, how I reject sticks, you know, uh, the feel, the tone of the different sticks and how to test them. So once again, always test them with the same hand on a an object like a pad uh, that's high pitched, that's a good testing mechanism. Or better yet, a piece of metal or formica in the same spot. Okay, that's what you want to do. Uh, and if they're going to be warped, uh, you can roll them. You know, you can do that. That's it's kind of rare these days, but you know, these are none of my sticks are warped. I learned that lesson a long time ago because uh, I dry them to. 5% or less, which is quite the achievement when you're talking about getting wood really dry without it checking or cracking. I have a whole process I use for that. But some of this wood's been sitting there for 10 years. Like I said, the pecan, uh, it's super dry. I have a meter and everything, and I have a little kiln that I made. So I dry this wood like crazy. And actually, I'll tell you right now how I do it. I probably shouldn't uh, give away all my secrets, but I'll actually cut the blanks, in other words, the dowels, and then, so the wood will be drying for a couple years. Then I'll cut my dowels and I'll let those dry for about six or seven months. And then I'll test those. And then I'll make a blank, which is basically uh, half a drumstick as far as, you know, the tip's not cut yet, the end is not cut, and the length is not cut, but the taper's cut. And then I'll let that dry as well for about a month, just to make sure. So I've never had a stick warp ever since the, you know, about 17 years ago when I was, didn't know any better. and. I, I was using wood that was a little green and wasn't thoroughly dry. So that, that if a stick warps, that's why, because it's not dry. Uh, once it's stable, it's not going anywhere. Uh, now let's talk a little about the tips, okay? So we'll get a little bit different stick. All right, so this is a new tip that I've been making, which is a very small barrel tip, which I really like. So this tip, the sticks are heavy. This is a heavy pair of sticks, I'll say, uh, 73 grams. It's what, it's what I call a concert stick. It's got weight. I use this for kind of real delicate snare drumming with the orchestra. Uh, it's also a good rudimental stick uh, if you don't mind the smaller tip. A lot of people don't like that. But it's, it's a really nice stick. And I make these uh, predominantly out of leopard wood because it's a very dense wood. And uh, the tip is pretty solid. The thing is when you're using these really hard woods and then you um, put it on the lathe and you're making the tip smaller and smaller the the thing that happens is the tip will shatter because the wood is so hard and that will happen but with the leopard wood I figured out a system and I keep my tools so sharp I sharpen all the time um, and that doesn't happen now the thing I always say is when I send a stick out or what I include with a stick is a sheet that tells you how to take care of them so every couple years or maybe every year you're going to want to dip this in a flooring polyurethane and oil base, just a tip now, just like that. And you can put it in a clamp and just let it dry. And then you're good for another year. All right. Uh, it's really important because if you're playing on any kind of mesh head or coated head, what's going to happen is you're going to actually sand that 
tip down. And if you have a practice pad like this with a head, what you want to do is take some 400 grit sandpaper and just lightly sand it. You can still play brushes on it. It'll sound fine. But you want to sand it because that roughness of the coating of the head is going to sand down your tip quickly. And the harder the wood, the quicker it's going to be sanded down. So that's really important. And like all the sticks I sell now, I include a sheet talking about that. Also, you want to try to avoid really heavy rim shots with these hard woods because the wood is so hard. First of all, it'll probably destroy your rim. Second of all, the stick can shatter. So these are not really rim shot sticks. If you're going to spend this much money, you know, for a pair of sticks, you don't want to be doing hard rim shots with them because as soon as you start taking pieces out of that stick, they're not matched anymore. Do that with the drum set sticks, which are cheap, okay? Uh, you do your heavy rim shots. So whenever I have a piece where I have heavy rim shots, I have sticks I use with that. Even with the orchestra, I'm not using my good sticks. And all the players I know that play in the orchestra have these, we call them, you know, disposables, where you just take out, you know, maybe they're Vic Firth Generals or something. You just take out these sticks and you can do rim shots if you're, whatever piece you're playing, if you're playing a lot of Copeland or something, you know, you're doing stick on stick or anything like that. You can tear up those sticks and it's not going to be, you know, you're not going to ruin your favorite pair of sticks. I'll tell you a quick story here. I had a student years ago that took a pair of my uh, Reamer, my William Reamer sticks. I had stepped out of the room of a lesson and I came back and, you know, William Reamer, in my opinion, was probably the greatest stick maker of all time. I have probably 20 pairs of his sticks and they're incredible. And when I started making sticks, I really modeled the weight and everything off of what he did. And then I branched out into these other woods. He mainly used persimmon. And then um, now I think uh, they're just using um, hickory. But th those original sticks are incredible. But anyway, I came back into the room and the student was, was on the drum set playing rim shots, playing cymbals with those rim sticks. And I just, I tell you, man, I've never come so close to, to maybe going to jail as I did then. But, um, you know, I got over it. <laughs> he didn't, <laughs> but I did. And uh, so don't leave your sticks around, your good sticks around, where a student can see them and use them and pick them up. He didn't know any better, so it's not really his fault. So anyway, uh, you don't want to destroy these, okay? So be, be gentle with them, and they'll last forever. Some of the sticks that I've had that I've used, uh, they're the first sticks that I made. So 20, over 20 years or so, I've had sticks, all right, that um, I still use that haven't worn out. All right, and then a really common question that I get, and it's, uh, it's fine. I, I don't get insulted, but people ask, why are these sticks so expensive? If any of you have that George Stone book, it's a collection. You can get it on Amazon. It's a little book. It's about, you know, 200 pages or so. It's all his articles from International Musician that he wrote from the, uh, I believe, the 40s to the 60s. And there, it's a great book. It's so interesting, and he's very funny and witty, and he tells all these stories, and there's stories about Morello in there and all these other drummers, and it's just such a great time capsule. So I highly uh, suggest that, and I can't remember the exact name, but I'll put it in the description. Uh, so anyway, there's a little thing that I saw on there a couple months ago when I was reading it uh, about drumstick making, where someone had written him a letter saying that, they wanted to get into the drumstick business, and he writes the greatest um, little reply, but, but in essence, it says that, well, here are the steps that you're going to need to do, and then you can decide if it's worth it. So he goes through the whole process of it, and by the end, it's, it's just so funny because it's exactly what I go through. So we'll go through that real fast for you now, but first of all, you got to get the wood, and it's got to be good wood. It can't be wood with cracks and knots, and uh, it takes a specific kind of wood to make a good drumstick. And a lot of it's going to be waste. Even when you build furniture like I do, you got to go through different boards. And a lot of those boards, they have knots and checks and crack, you know, cracks and things like that, you know, uh, problems that you can't use. And it's just firewood at that point. So drumsticks, it's the same thing. It's got to be a perfect piece of wood. And so you got to get that somehow. And then once you have that, it has to be a certain dryness. So you have to sit on that wood and make sure. So you'll usually get it. It'll be about 10, 15%. That's what the industry calls dry, unfortunately. Uh, and they'll say sometimes it's dry, kiln dried, but it's not kiln dried enough to do a drumstick. So then you need to do that. So you're sitting on that. This is after you've spent all this money to, to buy the wood. Then what you have to do is you have to cut it up. So that means you have to cut it up on a table saw. 
and some of this wood is really, really hard. So you have to use a special blade to do this, and you have to use a 220 amp table saw. A 120 is not going to do it. It'll just keep dying out. And I'm cutting these giant boards. They're thick. They have to be two inches thick so you can get you know a good dowel out of that to make the stick so you're sitting there cutting wood I have certain days I do it all day just cutting these boards and then you let it dry again like I said earlier after that then you make a dowel so you have to have a dowel maker of some sort uh, and there's different kinds of dowel makers but I have these manual dowel makers that I use they're they're small and I have to use a hand drill and I just drive the thing through there and so you do that and a lot of times if the wood has little problems in there that you didn't see a little knot or something that gets stuck in the dowel maker and then the stick cracks and you gotta hammer it out of there and it's a whole thing you know and so that's trash that's firewood and by the time it's all said and done out of you know a two hundred dollar piece of wood that's you know a two inch thick all right that's call that eight quarter and it might be I don't know 48 inches long and six inches wide that's gonna cost you a couple hundred dollars that board you might get uh, you know maybe 20 pairs of sticks out of there maybe uh, if you're really really lucky really lucky and conservative okay so after you cut all these dowels and you cut it up and then I let the dowels dry like I said before then after that you gotta start making blanks in other words do the taper and all and now now the sticks on the lathe and I've shown you guys some of that stuff and then you gotta make the stick which takes time and a lot of expertise a lot of years it's not easy and it's easy to make one stick but you gotta match a pair of sticks exactly and that calls for all kinds of calipers and all kinds of methods of doing things and jigs and different devices that you have to invent over the years and every stick maker has their own little process I certainly have mine once that's all said and done you make the sticks and they match and there it's a good pair hallelujah then you have to uh, finish them you have to put a finish on them and I use a special combination that I make of a beeswax and a urethane uh, the beeswax is really good for the grip I'm sure all of you who've bought the sticks notice that they feel really good in the hands and they've got a they're not slippery at all and uh, so I do that I do four coats of that I do six coats on the tip and the butt because they're the most likely to get damaged okay and then once all that's all said and done I engrave them all right I put my name on them or if some of you guys want your name on there too I do that and then you know you pack them up and you have to ship them so that's a lot of hours for a pair of drumsticks other questions so what stick is good for what so let's go through that real quick. The heavier sticks, like the heartwood, all right, which are more expensive, because heartwood is really expensive, and heartwood is the middle of the tree. So if you look at a piece of wood and you see like a dark streak on there, usually that's the center of the tree. As you get more towards the tree where the growth rings go out, all right, and the center, that's the first part of the tree, the oldest part of the tree, obviously, and the hardest part of the tree. That's the stabilization mechanism. For that and then everything on the outer part depending on the kind of wood is heart is um, um sapwood and the heartwoods on the middle now most trees have very limited um heartwood so persimmon has very very limited heartwood this is persimmon one of my favorite woods everybody's favorite wood for sticks got the perfect balance weight and doesn't have vibration very similar to all the all these I use but persimmon tends to be a little bit lighter uh, than all these other woods which I like it's like the perfect weight so most of the persimmon sticks I make range from uh, 60 grams to 72 grams this is a pair of persimmon reverse tip one of my new favorite tips you see how that looks I'll put it under the camera here so this tip goes backwards unbelievable for buzz rolls kind of plays itself you know so this is a tip I've been selling a lot and using a lot it's, and the taper you see is just crazy it's like a little hourglass taper there very very skinny all right the persimmon tends to be great for this kind of uh, this kind of design as leopard wood does and even pecan some of the other woods not so much so that heartwood 
uh, if you're going to buy it, it's really expensive to get. Uh, but it will give you a dense stick. So this is Purple Heart heartwood, just about impossible to find. And these are not for sale. <laughs> these are my own. And I'm trying to get more of it. But Purple Heart's a really difficult wood to work with. It's very, very hard and very brittle. And it burns, it, it will burn really easy. So if your tools aren't really sharp, everything will be black. So Purple Heart also tends to vibrate because it's so hard. So it's not necessarily a great stick for, for playing or warming up. Not so bad for light concert stuff. But for warming up and, and playing, you know, multiple strokes or whatever, it's got a little bit of a vibration to it. So I would probably stay away from that for, as a warm-up stick. Although these are 86 grams, because again, it's the heartwood. I just thought it'd be fun to make a pair, and I did. Uh, but I'm not actively selling Purple Heart at the moment. Uh, here's a pair of uh, Black Wenge, a great drumstick wood. Uh, 81 grams heartwood. See how dark it is. And I'll show you. This is the sapwood. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the lighting, but that's the sapwood, black wenge. That's the heartwood. So this sapwood, same length, a little bit, yeah, same exact length, actually. A tiny bit thinner, but this is 64 grams, and the heartwood is 81 grams. So that just shows you the density. Now you got to remember, 81 grams is a very heavy stick. So some of you might be shocked when you pick it up at this thinness, which is 5 eighths, the weight of it, because you might be used to a thicker stick. So it takes some getting used to. But I, li I like them. That's, that's what I use for warming up and practicing rudimental etudes and technique and whatnot. Okay, so, so that's the main difference between the heartwood and the sapwood. I've gotten questions on that. There's uh, some a really good... Uh, website online it's like the wood reference website I, i'll put it posted because the name is escaping me right now as so many things do <laughs> as i get older but um it shows you the janka scale which is the hardness of the wood you know so all these woods have a different janka rating so like you know hickory might be 55 you know uh, leopard wood might be 58 like that how hard the woods are purple hearts way up there and woods like ironwood or, or Brazilian walnut they call it uh, those woods are some of the hardest woods they might be you know in the 70s really up there so it, it varies okay with the woods let's talk a little about tips now so I make a variety of tips but this kind of tip is a teardrop tip this is much more difficult to make for me so it's more expensive all right uh, it's hard to match a teardrop stick. If you pick up some of your Coopermans and look at them, guaranteed they won't match. None ever, ever did. They never matched. The Reamer sticks did. So I am making limited numbers of teardrop. Mostly I'll make a barrel tip and a reverse tip. That's my favorite tip. So the barrel tips will still be in different sizes. So let me give you an example. This is what I consider a large barrel tip, these pecan. This is what I consider a medium barrel tip. You see the difference there? Hopefully I'll hold it under this camera. And a small barrel tip looks like that okay hold it under here again so those are the differences I'm working on a website now someone's helping me out where I'm gonna have pictures of the sticks for sale and it'll be easier to buy them um, you know like that it's still in process but I will have close-up pictures of the actual stick and I might even have a sound clip not that it matters but a lot of you ask about the sound. I did that earlier. They all sound different, you know. So this is a heavy pair of pecan. And this is a pair of, these pecan sticks were 83 grams. It's a pair of persimmon.
not as much of a difference as some of them, but uh, there is a, a difference. And of course, they feel uh, different. So once again, usually the, the lighter the stick, the lower the pitch, the heavier the stick, the higher the pitch. So I hope that answers all of your questions. Uh, that's pretty much it for that. And once again, uh, you know, I apologize for the sometimes having to, you have to wait a couple weeks or whatever, but I am very, very busy now playing a lot and teaching a lot. So uh, I do it whenever I can, but I'm going to get in there now probably for a couple weeks every day and stock up for the summer. So if you're interested in some sticks, uh, let me know. Uh, you can just uh, email me at the uh, rickdior at gmail.com. It's also be in the description and at the end of this video. And uh, I'm going to maybe make enough so I can offer them a little cheaper. That's the problem is time. So we'll see what happens with that. But uh, the wood's not getting any less expensive. It just keeps going up. I'm sure all you know about all the inflation and everything like that. But I really am selling them at... As far as time goes, you know, by the time it's all said and done, I'm basically working for, you know, probably six bucks an hour or something, which is, I enjoy making them and it's gratifying, especially when you guys like the sticks and you use them, uh, but it is very time consuming and I really don't know how much longer I'm going to do it because I really don't make any money doing it when it's all said and done uh, and it is quite painful on my hands. But uh, any other questions, just email me about them and, uh, you know, so I'll play it just a little for you with these, uh, what should I use? I'll use these bloodwood sticks. These are beautiful. These are kind of in the rosewood family. And I do have a good supply of this stuff now too. So we'll see you next time.